Okay, so um, what we, we wanted to take up the topic tonight um, is obviously, you know, Iran has, has struck Israel. We talked about it on Sunday. And now what we're starting to get out is all this propaganda now. Uh, obviously, we had propaganda when Hamas attacks, but now we're having more propaganda even when Iran attacks and, and again, making more lies about Israel. So what I wanted to take you through a little bit is uh, I, I, got, I, I read several articles this week um, on like current blood libels that are going on currently in propaganda medias and stuff like that, and I thought... It might be good to uh, do a thing on it so we can get it posted so people out there understand like what's going on here. Because I was talking to somebody uh, from my previous ministry that I knew was a friend and he contacted me today and a really good guy and uh, I, I used to know him really well. And he says, hey man, you got any, can you help me on Israel because um, I'm, I, I'm dealing with these new believers, and they're, they're, they have this pro-Palestinian mindset. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's unfortunate because that's what's going on. It, they're getting caught up in the propaganda. And so I fired off some stuff, some, th- some videos I did, and I said give them to, to, to them to watch and stuff. And hopefully they're not slimed yet and can have an open mind and realize that you know, what, they've been heard, what they've been hearing about the Palestinians and Hamas and Iran and, and Israel has been a bunch of lies, and then hopefully you can correct that. But I thought about that even today that, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm sure that is the problem out there in most mainstream churches is either they're, A, they're not talking about it, or, or, and, and B, they're not dealing with the lies, obviously, that's going on currently, and so... Like everything out of CNN or MS, uh, M- LSD or whatever it, the name is, I, can't, I always can't get that right. M- MS LSD or something like that. I, yeah, MS DNC is another good one, yeah, right? I, I can't get past, uh, I can't, uh, that they just constantly lie and like make up stuff. And like, I think it was Samantha Storm that just said that, you know, the, the Gazans are starving to death. And I'm like, you're such a liar. But if you don't know that, I guess you just believe that junk. And if your church is not addressing it or, or you're not listening to the right news sources, you're going to get messed up. Well, I, 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 you know, I, I, I read several articles this, this week, uh, one from Caroline Glick and another one from Jewish News, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Israel 365. And they were, they were making the point that, you know, what we had in the, uh, you know, the 12th century uh, remember, the, the original blood libel was that the Jews were stealing Christian kids, sacrificing them, and taking their blood to make their matzahs for Passover, right? And as ridiculous as that is, because, you know, you, like, you, you think about that from a, from a mosaic standpoint. Number one, you're forbidden to eat blood. Number two, murder is wrong, uh, according to Ten Commandments, right? Um, and, and that's just totally made up out of whole cloth. And it sparked all kinds of uh, persecution with Jews. And what, it, interesting enough, I was reading some history about this uh, in church history. There wasn't a big rift between Jews and Christians until about the, uh, the Crusades. And so up until then, most Jews and Christians got along just fine. Uh, we know the church had become anti-Semitic to some degree. But there wasn't this like libels that are being spread and there wasn't you know going after Jews or anything like that so a lot of what happened started in the crusades and uh, the crusaders uh, ran out of money and the churches uh, weren't going to fund them anymore and they weren't giving them loans anymore so they were looking for money and so the crusaders actually started killing Jews and taking their money Um, so there was a lot of bad stuff happening in the crusades as well Um, and, and then obviously the libels started and this is a, a, a painting, uh, and I can't remember who painted the, the thing, but it's a famous painting. As you can see, this was portraying Jews stealing Christian children and uh, taking their blood to make matzahs. This is the famous painting on that, um, which is just insane, right? So anyway, um, just a, l- l- before I go into it, just give you some updates of what's going on in Israel before we get into the more libels. Um, 18 Israelis wounded from Hezbollah attack. So, like, if you're thinking Hezbollah is not going to attack, they are. They're getting ready to. And so they attacked uh, 18, uh, mostly were Israeli soldiers. They targeted uh, a place in western Galilee. So that happened. Uh, Here's here's, uh, someone filming it, actually. 
جوز يسوع علي هذا جا 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 الله جا ابعد 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 So that's what Israel has to face like every day from the north. That's why the people are still in hotels uh, in the north because they won't, I wouldn't live next to Hezbollah up in the north when they're firing rockets in like that and, and trying to hurt people. Uh, so Israel, as you know, responds as they should. So this is where they found where the, the rockets were fired out um, and they targeted them. See ya. Yeah, amen. Good for them. So, you know, when you see that, that's good for Israel because look, they, you, you saw the truth. They were fired upon, you got 18 injured, so Israel has the right to retaliate, take the, and they found the guys who shot the rocket off and they targeted them and killed them. Good, that's how you do it. But the problem is, all that's said in the media is Israel fired upon Hezbollah or something like that. You know, it's, it's never, they're, they're doing it in retaliation. It's always Israel's fault. You know, that's the media propaganda. And then obviously, um, you know already that the Blinken told Gantz, we don't want you to escalate. But, you know, and, and you already know about, the, you know, the White House not wanting to escalate things. But why are they not talking to Netanyahu? Why is he talking to Gantz? He needs to be talking to the prime minister. But again, that goes back to what, what I'm telling you. They're trying to unseat Netanyahu and have another election and get him out of there. So, um, they, you know, obviously they don't want this to pop up into a regional war. Biden administration opposition to military action against Iran reflects political considerations relating to the 2024 elections. Yes, we know that. And we know that they don't want that. But unfortunately, that policy of not wanting a war is what's going to cause the war. Okay, that's the problem. And again, weak leadership causes rogue people to do crazy things. Okay, so that's currently what's going on in Israel, and we're monitoring that. But let's go back to this uh, blood libel stuff, because we have to understand what's, what's been happening to the Jews and what's happening currently so that we can defend uh, you know, our positions with Israel. The blood libel surfaced about the 12th century, periodically through Eastern and Central Europe, and the lie said they were kidnapping kids and putting in the matzahs, okay? And that caused a spark outrage of people taking it out on Jews and hurting them and physically attacking them and killing them, okay? So that, that, that did it. Then the other libel came with the Black Death, uh, the Black Plague. And we, we now know that was uh, from the fleas on the rats, the bubonic plague, that killed so many Europeans at the time. Well, and, and, and the, the conditions of Europe were absolutely horrible. Um, I mean, if you went to Paris, you went to London, it smelled so rotten. Because, um, I mean, they, they threw their, their, their excrement out the window onto the, the streets and their trash and the slaughterhouses of animals. The blood would just go right into the streets. And right in front of people's homes, and, and, and it was just a cesspool of disease, 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 disease. No one washed their hands or anything like that. But then what, the, what happened is they would look at the Jews, and the Jews were practicing uh, you know, uh, the law, and the law had sanitary laws involved in that, right? And so they noticed that the Jews were not getting sick like the rest of everyone else because they washed their hands. They bathed. I mean, I was reading some things about certain Christians living during the Black Death. They refused to take a bath. Refuse, and one guy, uh, one of the saints, supposedly, Catholic saints guys, um, they, they said he never took a bath till, the day, till he died. He never, that's it. He didn't bathe because they, they were just like so anti-bathing. Which, if you go to the Jewish law, you have mikvahs. Right, you bathed, you you cleansed, you washed, you washed your hands, and 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 it, it, they they didn't throw their feces out the door, right? So what did what did God have Israel do when he was with Moses? You got two million people living in the desert. We're gonna go to the bathroom at. What did what did you think God had them do? You had to bury it. You go to the bathroom, bury it. You don't leave it on the top of the ground. And what happened is, if you get with that book, None of These Diseases, if you're ever interested in that book, 
um, it goes through, I think a medical guy, I can't remember who, what his name is. You can Google it. He went through the sanitary conditions of Israel, how it kept them alive. Like if someone got a disease, they put them out of the camp for seven days. Why? They didn't want that stuff spreading. They didn't know why, they just did it. But God had it a whole plan. Hey, this is what, how you take care of human excrement of two million people in the desert. You just don't go to the bathroom anywhere you want. Well, that's what the Europeans were doing. It was disgusting, right? Um, and so the Black Death was spreading all through them. Again, what did they do? Blame it on the Jews because they looked at them and they said, well, they're not getting sick. Crazy, right? And then, uh, you probably know this, uh, Dr. Mensing probably knows this, is they, um, they were having infant mortalities of, like no tomorrow in Europe. And they couldn't figure it out. And then, of course, they looked at the Jews, and the Jews were delivering babies, but they weren't having as high infant mortality as the Europeans were. They're like, couldn't figure this out. And, and, and what they noticed is the Jewish doctors were washing their hands. And so what they figured out with the European doctors, what they were doing, they worked in the morgue with dead bodies, and then would go over and deliver babies and, and it had all that disease from the dead bodies touching the babies and the moms, and, and it shot the, the infant mortality like there's no tomorrow. But then when they noticed the Jews were washing their hands before they saw a patient and touched a patient, and that, that lessened the infant mortality and the mom was getting sick and everything like that. So what did they do? They didn't say, well, there must be some technique you're doing. No, it, that, no you must have cursed us or something. You know, you, the, it's like... Well, no, they finally realized what it was. You had to wash your hands, and you don't go from a dead body to delivering babies. That's stupid, right? And the Middle Ages was like stupid, stupid stuff they were doing. How did, how am I, oh my goodness, it was dumb. But they didn't, you know, they would go, and then they would have problems with their well waters. And, and you, you have the, the libels, well, the Jews are putting poison in the well. They're poisoning our wells. It's like, really? Wow, it's sanitary water conditions. You know what I mean? You have to have sanitary water, and they didn't have it. Um, then, then the, the 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 tropes came out that the 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 Jews um, uh, are controlling the banking system. It's their fault, and and so um, they're the evil, mean bankers. And and the truth be known, it, it was the fact that the Jewish people were practicing biblical principles of economics. And they were doing very well. And um, people who don't have a biblical sense of how to handle economics do very poorly um, because they don't know how to handle money. And if you know the Bible, it, the Bible teaches you how to handle money, right? That's, that's basic principles of economics are in there. Uh, even with the, the, you know, Solomon saying, like, diversify your wealth, right? Solomon says, put your, uh, put your wares on uh, seven ships that if one sinks, you still have six. Well, that's called a diversification. Every, every financial advisor would tell you to diversify, right? Well, no one knew that except them because they were following Solomon. And so, you know, they were doing well, right? And plus, they had God's blessing on top of that. So they got blamed for that. Um, and then today, you know, um, they'll say, well, the media is controlled by the Jews, and they're controlling everything, All you know, L.A. Times, Washington Times, yada, yada, yada. We've heard that all before, right? That's a libel. And then they'll say, you know, the, the worldwide communist revolution was really Jewish because Marx was Jewish, and, and so that makes it all the Jews uh, in, in, involved in a, a, a worldwide communistic conspiracy. It's, at the core of it, it's Jewish. And you're like, where are you getting this stuff? And then this is coming, you know, obviously you've seen this. This is from uh, World War II, um, Nazi Germany, where you has the Jews, you know, like this uh, octopus controlling the entire planet, yada, yada, yada. Um, that actually was taken, uh, uh, that picture was used by Greta Thunberg and when she excoriated the Jews after Hamas uh, dealt with them. So that tells you a lot about Greta Thunberg and her, her handlers not understanding then you'll have these kinds of tropes. Um, this is obviously Mary, it looks like, but Jesus with a Palestinian scarf and says, do not kill him twice, and obviously referring to the IDF. That's, this stuff's out there, right? I mean, you just saw Tucker, we showed you last week, uh, um, interview a guy that says Jesus was a Palestinian and, and, and tries to checkpoint stuff. I mean, 
When you see this, man, you think, well, that, that's like World War II stuff. Yeah, that's right. I know. It, here we go again. Here we go again. And nothing's be, this is not being corrected, by the way. So, interesting enough, um, you probably know about this, the Protocols of Zion, and this was a fraudulent document that was created in uh, 18, 1897. Uh, Hitler used this in, in, in the Holocaust, and basically saying that the Jews and the Freemasons uh, were together to disrupt Christian civilization, to erect a world state, a global government, basically, uh, with their joint rule, and basically going to use liberalism and socialism by, to subvert Christendom. And, and um, believe it or not, I, I've actually talked to people that actually believe this nonsense, man, that they, they've read it and they think it's true and, and like, they're, you know, they claim to be Christians, but they believe lies like this. And I couldn't convince them otherwise. It was, it was weird um, how they were so believing some, a fraudulent document and, and it was almost like they wanted to believe it, if that makes sense. Because uh, I said, that, that's a total, that's been proven to be a fraud. What are you talking about? And they, they like totally believed it. Anyway, um, the newest thing that came out is what they did to Netanyahu recently. You might have seen this. Uh, this happened in Quebec, Quebec, Canada. And they published a cartoon depicting Netanyahu as a vampire. And so this is recent. And I want to show you this because we're seeing the inklings of pre-Holocaust mentality with people having no qualms creating political cart cartoons mocking the Jews as blood-sucking vampires, okay? That's Nazi Germany, okay? And it's happening again. It's happening all over again. So that's not, you know, you can see the claws, uh, he's like a vampire. You can see the ears. You can see the facial expressions. And, 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 and um, again, um, this message that, that the Jews are blood-sucking vampires comes straight out of World War II. Comes right out of that. So what is this? Well, uh, we call this in counseling monsterizing or demonizing the person. Now, I'll give you an example. Like if, two married, if a married couple is together and they, they're, they're on the outs, um, what they do to feel justified in, in, in their actions toward the other spouse is they'll monsterize the other spouse. So they'll make him into a demon. He's the worst guy ever or she's the worst woman ever. And uh, Brandon, I'm, I'm married to a monster. I got to get out of this marriage because I'm a, he's a monster or she's a monster. And it's a classic case of, of, of doing that. It, it, um, sometimes they are monsters. There's no doubt about that. But, but usually they're not, and they're, they're demonizing them, and they make them out to be worse than they are. And then when you get in there, you realize, that's, that's nothing. This person wants out of the marriage. That's all they're doing. But they'll start treating the other person bad and feel justified by doing it because when you monsterize somebody, you feel justified in your physical or mental or emotional actions towards them because if Frankenstein is who you're married to, then you need to bring out the pitchforks and the torches and capture the monster and destroy the monster, right? That's, that's how the narrative goes. So when you demonize people, a group, or the Jews, it gives people the incentive and emotion to say, you're right. We need to bring out the pitchforks and the, the, the torches and surround the monster, and that monster today is Israel and Jews. And it's happening again. Um, and you know, the thing about it is, you, you, who, I don't know who said this, but history keeps repeating itself. And if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it, right? You know that. Well, here we are again. Here we are again. And it's happening. Huh. So here's another current cartoon. This is current stuff. This is not World War II. So obviously, that's Trudeau giving arms to Israel. So if you can see on below, that's Putin, and there's the Ukraine guy, Zelensky, saying, hello, I need arms, and from the monster Putin who's you know, firing missiles to us. Up above them is Netanyahu and Israel, and notice on Netanyahu's tie is blood, right? Um, and then Netanyahu's getting weapons, and those weapons are what? what where are they from? 
America. Okay? And this monster Netanyahu, this monster Israel, is just throwing down weapons on the poor Palestinians. What are the Palestinians doing in the, in the cartoon? Feed us. We're starving to death. Here's our bowls of food. We have no food. Because remember I told you, what did they say? What did Samantha Powers say? And these other idiots out there lying, saying that the Jews or Israel is starving the Palestinians, which I told you it's not true. There's been 80% increase of food deliveries into the Gaza, uh, into that area, since October 7th. So they have plenty of food. Plenty of food. No one's starving. No one is starving. That's a lie. But yet the cartoon is made out saying, we're starving, hello, feed us, um, quit supply, uh, Canada needs to quit supplying arms to Netanyahu, and the arms are coming from the United States, and poor Zelensky, who's nothing but doing a proxy war for the United States, he needs weapons, please help him. Dude, this is straight out of World War II. And people are stupid enough to believe this. So let me show you a video from PragerU. If you guys are familiar with PragerU, you should become familiar with it. It's Dennis Prager. He's Jewish. Uh, he makes very good videos. About, they're about five minutes. I, and it's, it, people, <laughs> they always say, well, PragerU is not a real university. I can tell you this. That has better information in PragerU than going to any Cal State up and down California. I guarantee you that. Um, but anyway, they have some good clips on there about Israel. I found one. I want to show you this. Uh, this is interesting. Imagine a group of people who work to destroy Italy because they claim Italy's origins are illegitimate. Imagine further that these people maintain that of all the countries in the world, only Italy doesn't deserve to exist. And then imagine that these people vigorously deny that they are anti-Italian. Would you believe them? Now substitute Israel for Italy, and you'll understand the dishonesty and absurdity of the argument that one could be anti-Zionist, that is, against the existence of a Jewish state, but not anti-Semitic. But that is precisely what anti-Zionists say. They argue that Israel's existence is illegitimate. They don't believe this of any other country in the world, no matter how bloody its origins and then they get offended when they're accused of being anti-Semitic. How can they make this argument? First, they change the topic. They say it's unfair to charge those who merely criticize Israel with being anti-Semitic. But criticism of Israel is fine. Denying Israel's right to exist isn't. Anti-Zionism isn't criticism of Israel. Anti-Zionism is opposition to Israel's existence. Zionism is the name of the movement that advocates for the return of Jews to their historic homeland. Over the past 3,000 years, there were only two independent states located in what is called Israel. Both were Jewish states, and invaders destroyed both. No Arab or Muslim or any other country ever existed in that land, which was only named Palestine by the Romans to remove all memory of the Jewish state they destroyed in the year 70. Second, anti-Zionists claim they can't be anti-Jewish because Zionism has nothing to do with Judaism. That's equally false. It is the same as saying Italy has nothing to do with being Italian. Judaism has always, always consisted of three components, God, Torah, and Israel. If Israel isn't part of Judaism, neither is the Bible or God. Third, anti-Zionists claim that Judaism is only a religion, therefore Jews are only members of a religion, not a nation. But the Jews are called a nation more than a hundred times in the Bible. That is why there can be irreligious, secular, and even atheist Jews, because Jews are not only a religion, they are also a people or a nation. There are no atheist Christians because Christianity is only a religion. Fourth. The anti-Zionists claim that Israel is illegitimate because it is racist. This is the fraudulent charge Israel haters and America haters make against two of the least racist societies in the world. Half of Israel's Jews are not even white, and anyone of any race or ethnicity can become a Jew. Plus, one of five Israelis isn't a Jew. 
And these Israeli citizens, mostly Arab Muslims, have the same rights as Jewish Israelis. As for Israel's control of the West Bank, that has nothing to do with race. Israel doesn't control the West Bank because Palestinians are of another race, but because Palestinians and their Arab allies tried to destroy Israel in 1967, and they lost the war. Palestinians have rejected offers to found their own state on five separate occasions since 1947. That's the only reason they don't have a state. And why have they always rejected building a Palestinian state? Because they have always been more interested in destroying the Jewish state. Finally, the anti-Zionists claim that Israel's origins are illegitimate. Of all the world's 200-plus countries, the only country anti-Zionists declare illegitimate is also the only Jewish one. That's pretty much all you need to know about their motives. Why, for example, don't they make this claim about Pakistan? In 1947, nine months before the establishment of Israel, India was partitioned into a Muslim state, Pakistan, and a Hindu state, India. Unlike Israel, Pakistan had never existed before. Unlike Israel's founding, which created about 700,000 Jewish refugees from Arab lands and about 700,000 Arab refugees from what became Israel, the founding of Pakistan created about 7 million Muslim refugees from India and about 7 million Hindu refugees from Pakistan. And while the highest estimate of Arab deaths in the fighting that took place when Israel was established is 10,000, the number of deaths as a result of Pakistan's creation is around one million. So why is Israel's legitimacy challenged while Pakistan's isn't? There's only one answer. Israel is the one Jewish state. Of course, not all anti-Zionists hate all Jews. But if you seek to destroy Italy, you don't have to hate every Italian to be anti-Italian. If you seek to destroy the one Jewish state, you don't have to hate every Jew to be an anti-Semite. I'm Dennis Prager. So if you want to share something with somebody that doesn't get it about Israel, give them a Prager video about Israel. It takes them about five minutes. It'll bring them right up to speed, man. Uh, it's, they're really good. I, I, I highly recommend them. Um, anyway, let, let's talk about the, the current blood libels that are going on today. Number one, in the wokeism, Zionism is white supremacy. Just like you saw in the Prager video, um, there's different, <laughs> there's different uh, skin uh, colors in Israel. Not all every Jew is white. Some are, uh, some are not. Some are actually from Africa, and they have Jewish blood in them. And so you'll see different shades of skin color in the nation of Israel, and they're Jewish genetically. So I don't know how you make that a white supremacy thing, but again, again, this is forcing square pegs in round holes to fit a narrative. Two, Israel occupies a Palestinian land. Excuse me, there's no such thing as a Palestinian land. There, no, there was no such thing as the Palestinians until 1964. What are you talking about? But again, if you don't know your history, oh, the Jews came in in 1948, started settle, settling and occupying their land and took over. That's not what happened. The, U, the UN partitioned it out for them. Again, it's crazy. Israel practices colonialism. That's not what Israel practiced. They were given a homeland by the UN. And the, the, the area that they were giving... They, uh, they totally were going to allow the Arabs to live there with them. In fact, they told the Arabs, don't leave. But the other Arab nations told uh, uh, their Arab friends living in the land, get out, we're going to smoke Israel, we're going to destroy her, and then you guys can move back in once we're done. Guess what? Israel didn't tell them to leave. Their own Arab friends told them to leave, and they left, even, even though Israel told them not to leave. And about 100 to 150,000 uh, Arabs stayed with Israel, just like I told them. So there was no colonialism going on. That's just wrong history. Israel, uh, Israel violates human rights. How so? I want to know. The UN makes her, makes her the most violated uh, of human rights in any other country, beyond China, beyond Russia, beyond, beyond Iran. So obviously, when you ask somebody, what rights are they violating? then they can't tell you because they have to make stuff up, which I'll show you how they make stuff up. 
They'll say Israel is an apartheid state. How is that? Because there's Arabs in the Knesset. There's, there's all kinds of different flavors, uh, nationalities, ethnicities, all through Israel. What are you talking about their apartheid state? Why would you say they're like South Africa? Well, they keep the Gaza in the area. These people, it has nothing to do with the race. It has to do with they want to kill you. They want to kill them. Do you want to live next to a killer? Putting up, putting up a wall would keep, it keeps the killers out. Kept about 90-something percent of the killers out that want to blow them up. It's not apartheid to want to stay away from people who want to kill you. Uh, stupid. Israel commits genocide against the Palestinians. How is that happening? How, what are you talking about genocide? What genocide? Well, they say there's 30,000 people they have killed since October 7th. Where did you get that number? Well, Hamas gave it to me. Okay, thank you. Never mind. So you're going to believe Hamas, who rapes and kills and murders babies and puts them in ovens. Yeah. So it's, it, it, I'll show you that it's, it's unfounded, okay? Um, Jesus was a Palestinian. I mean, we can check that off real quick. That's a lie. Jesus is not a Palestinian. But that, that pastor that interviewed Tucker Carlson says he is, okay? Israel, or, uh, Israel uh, organ harvests its victims, China does, that's true. China does, we know that. China, you go in China, you wake up in a bathtub of ice and your kidney's missing, that's China. But it's not Israel. Because, But again, where did this come from? I don't know, some dude made it up. Okay? Israel commits settlers' violence against Palestinians. That's not true. They, don't, they, they call it settlers' violence by, by being on their own land, but they're not committing violence against anybody. You're lying. IDF rapes Palestinian women and female prisoners. There, there's no evidence for this. It's made up. IDF tortures Palestinian prisoners. There's no evidence for this. Now, how would you like to be, pretend this is like your ex-wife, okay? If you had one. And you're going to court and these are all the lies they're saying to you, to the judge. Okay? Just making stuff up out of, of, of like whole cloth. Like, where did you get that at? Yeah, yeah, IDF rapes Palestinian women. I saw him rape the neighbor the other day. He raped the neighbor, judge. What do you do in that kind of situation when someone's just making stuff up? You get what I'm saying? There's no evidence. How do you defend yourself if they're saying the IDF rapes Palestinian women, and there's no evidence. How do you, how do you, how do you deal with that? Okay, keep thinking about it. Israel has mastered the information war in Gaza, they say. That's currently what they're saying. I'm sorry, the information war is on, against Israel. I don't know where someone would say this. And they're like, yeah, they control the media, and they're controlling all of this, and they're working with Iran, and they're working with Russia. Excuse me, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's the new libel. They mastered the information on Gaza. Yeah. Israel is starving the Palestinians. Not true. Uh, 70 food trucks entered Gaza daily before October 7th, and now 126 entered daily, about 80% increase. That's from Caroline Glick. Uh, Israel has murdered 30,000 Gazans. Um, well, that's not true, and they say that 70% of them are women and children, which is not true. This comes from a Hamas source. Um, we know from the IDF 13,000 terrorists have been killed. Good. Good. And there's more to be, for them to kill, and they need to kill these terrorists. So, but here's what happens. It's already, uh, the, the, uh, Abraham Weiner, a uh, statistics professor at Wharton School, uh, University of Penn, did the ratios. He said, uh, if they're killing 13,000 uh, terrorists, and you have, uh, so the ratio of terrorists to civilians among the dead, Gaza is 1 to 1.3. It's the lowest militant to civilian ratio in the history of modern warfare, as was demonstrated earlier this month in, stu in the study that he, he came out with. So they're lying. They're lying about their numbers, right? And, and we would expect Hamas, I mean, they can lie, according to the Quran. Now, here's the interesting thing. This is Amir Avivi. Uh, I listen to him uh, on his updates a lot. He's really good. He just got out of a meeting with the U.S. State Department, okay? And he was confronted with the accusation head-on about them uh, raping uh, and doing sexual abuse to Palestinian women. 
So, I mean, he goes, uh, 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 he wrote on his ex account, it's hard to leave me, it's hard to leave me speechless and shocked, but that is precisely what happened in my meeting at the State Department when the representative responsible for the Israeli Palestinian dossier accused Israel of systematic sexual abuse of Palestinian women entirely on the basis of a concocted UN report that was written to try to find something to balance the atrocities of October 7th. So he's, I mean, I mean this guy's legit, man. I, I listened to him on, on his updates. He's, he's great. And he's saying, look, they, they, that was the first thing the State Department of the United States asked me. What, you know, what are you guys doing raping Palestinian women? They're like, what? What are you talking about? Again, World War II, we're just making up. We're making the Jews as evil as we possibly can. That's what they're doing, right? Reasons for blood libels. Let's, let's understand this. There's a, there's a lot of reasons for creating these lies. And, and by the way, this, the same reasons here could be the same reason your ex-wife makes up lies about you. Or anybody makes up lies about you. Okay? It's the same reason, same principle in lying. Number one, they come from hate. The person hates you. Okay? And we know there's plenty of people that hate the Jews. For no reason. Right? Two, libels are created to create a scapegoat many times, right? So you have to create a scapegoat. Hitler did it with the Jews, made them the scapegoat, made everyone blame them, okay? So that's, that's part of the narrative as well. So if you're getting blamed on a personal level and people are lying about you, they're looking for a scapegoat because they're doing something personally and they want to deflect the attention off of them onto a scapegoat. That's what scapegoating does, okay? Blood levels also create, are created to form some type of strategy for the person and what they're trying to achieve, okay? So why is the United States demonizing uh, you know, uh, Israel, saying, look, you're not going to fight a war, Netanyahu's out of control, um, we're going to have to get him out of there. Um, what is the United States strategy for demonizing uh, and saying that Israel is starving people, it's not enough food, they need to, because we have said this about Israel. We have said this, our State Department, that, we're not getting, that Israel's not getting enough food, so we're starving them out. The, uh, Israel's starving them out. Okay. What's the strategy behind that? What's the strategy of the United States? What's the strategy of Biden of why they would, they would create a scenario to where they're putting Israel on the equal footing with Hamas and saying, look, uh, you know, Iran attacked you. Okay, you defended yourself, but don't retaliate. What's their objective? It's an election year. They don't want a war. So it's a totally political agenda to make sure a war doesn't sprout up during Biden's last year here because he's getting ready to run. So because it's a political motivation, then you have to demonize Israel to some extent and say, look, if you do this, we're going to pull all the weapons out. You're going to do what we tell you to do because you're not going to cause a war in the election year because Biden goes into November 1st and the gas prices are $10 a gallon, we're going to lose. So from the Biden administration... It's not about right and wrong. It's about political maneuvering. So this is what happens when you, again, these are all the reasons, but typically someone has an agenda and they're going to paint someone out to be bad. And in this case, you're painting Israel out because they don't want Israel to go too far and start a war. And Israel's ready to throw down. Okay, so you have that. Um, blood libels are created from jealousy. Okay, so in regards to Israel, I'm telling you what, you know, there's a jealousy there with a lot of, of countries that don't like her because if you look at her history for 75 years, now it's going to be 76 in May, she's phenomenal. Like you go over there and it's like living in the United States, it's phenomenal. They're on the cutting edge of a lot of things and they're, they're vibrant, they're inventive, they're engineering, they're medical, it's great. And, and typically Jews have a higher IQ than the rest of humanity. Just, it is what it is. And so they, because of that, they, they, they do very well. Well, a lot of countries have been in existence for thousands of years and they haven't even come close to that. 
especially the Arab nations. I mean, what were, where would Saudi Arabia be if it hadn't been for oil? Or Iran, or Iraq, or any of these countries. They've been around for thousands of years. They haven't created anything. What did they create? I don't know. But you go to Israel, and they're inventing things left and right. You know, they created this, they created that. It's, it's crazy, man, how they're creating, right? So that creates a jealousy in a lot of people. It does. And it, it, think about that on a personal level. If you're doing well because you're living right, like I, sent, I, I mentioned about Jacob doing well, remember, and, and Laban getting ticked off at him because he's doing so well, and, or Cain getting mad at Abel. It's the same concept. You get jealous of them. Like, how, how are they doing so well and I'm not? Well, then I'm going to get mad at them. I mean, it sounds stupid, but that's how people operate. Blood libels are created because of covetousness, because of what they have. Now, you know, with Israel, they have land that God gave them, right? And, and in a, there is a spiritual reason of why people want their land. Um, they covet that which God gave them. And the funny thing is Israel didn't even have oil or anything, and yet these other nations around them are oil rich, but yet they want Israel. Okay, let's, let's understand Israel from a strategic standpoint and where Israel's situated. You understand Israel's in the center of three continents. So strategically speaking, if you wanted to control three continents, you have to control Israel. That's what happens. So Israel, its situation is extremely strategic. You have Europe, you have Asia, and then below you is Africa. You control the whole thing if you're right there in the middle. And, and that's why the Romans wanted it. That's why, I mean, it is a central location to control because the trade routes come from Africa or whatever and went into Europe and Asia in the ancient days, but you still have oil coming through the Red Sea, uh, all those places, and then you have port cities out there, and then you have the gas reserves. Israel is a very strategic place. It's envious of a lot of countries, Okay. So you have that. Uh, blood libels appeal to people's emotions because they're irrational, right? You don't have to have facts or evidence. You just say it. They're raping Palestinian women. They're committing genocide. It's irrational, right? Blood libels are hard to defend against. Prove, prove to me, Brandon, that Netanyahu's not a vampire. What? What? Prove to me he's not a vampire. Prove to me that they're not evil. Prove to me they're not committing genocide. Okay, you know, you, when someone makes an accusation, they have, I mean, how do you defend against someone just making the most outlandish statement about you? He raped the neighbor. I saw him. But no one else did. I mean, this is the kind of stuff they're producing, right? Making statements, no evidence, no truth, no nothing. It's hard to defend against that, right? I had a, I had a guy a long time ago, and, and, and it was a very bad situation, and, and, and it was just like this. It was a libel. He suspected his wife was cheating on him, and sure enough, she was. And uh, the funny thing about it is be, before he we had the evidence that she was really cheating on him, uh, we kind of suspected it, but she was accusing him of cheating. Isn't that funny? That's how the left operates, right? They accuse you of the very thing they do. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a principle. Yeah. So she was accusing him of cheating on her. And he's like, Brandon, I'm not cheating on her. I said, no, you're not. I go, but I suspect she is cheating on you, though, because she, she's making these accusations, and there's lost time, and we don't know where she's at, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, uh, evidence comes out. She was cheating on him at, at lunchtime with a guy repeatedly, over and over and over and over again, uh, at lunch. So, cat's out of the bag. She's busted. I said, well, um, this is your opportunity. If you want to stay in the relationship, it's your choice. If you don't, you have the, the pass by Messiah. You can get out right now if you want and cut, cut bait and move on. He goes, yeah, I'm going to cut bait. I'm, that, that's it. I'm, I'm done. All right. And we went on from there. Then he calls me later on, he goes, you're not going to believe what she's doing because she's now in a custody battle with the kids. She goes, she, he, she went to my work 
and told my boss that I was molesting the children. I said, yeah, that's called a blood libel. And I said, these people, I, I said, I said I'm, I'm telling you what, I, I, it doesn't matter when they call themselves Christians, when they're out for blood, I said, they will make up the, the biggest lie just to destroy you. I go, that's about destruction. That's not about being amicable with the kids. That's a, I want to destroy you. And the funny thing is, she was the one that was cheating on him. Now, when you take that and you, you look at that, I want you to take that principle, but then apply it to the culture. Apply it to what they're doing to Israel. This is how evil people are, man. They'll just totally make things up. He's molesting the kids to the judge. How do you defend yourself? I'm not either. Well, prove. So all of a sudden, they try to put the burden on you, right? Prove. Prove you're not molesting your kids. What? You see what I'm saying? You see the, how the tactic works? You have to understand that tactic because it's very demonic. It's very devilish when people do that to you, right? Make something up and say, prove it. And that's why I say at the end of this, when you put it all together, it's very satanic. Satan is the accuser of the brethren, is he not? Okay, what does he accuse you of? Most of the time of things that are totally false, totally out of whack, totally made up. And then what he does is he uses useful idiots to do his work for him to come against you, or in this case, come against Israel, right? So all these useful idiots out there saying what they're saying, making stuff, the IDF is raping Palestinian women. Dude, that's satanic. You, you, you have to, it's not just a political thing, and it is a gen agenda, but you have to boil it down and say, dude, that's totally out of the mouth of Satan. You have an agenda against God's people because it's satanic. So here's the thing. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't get a chance to talk to my friend about this, but I, but I probably should have added this to it. If you present the evidence to people and say, hey, look, here's the food trucks going in to supply the Gazans. Here's the evidence that they're not raping women because there's no evidence. Sorry, there's no evidence. Here's the evidence of, of, of it's not 30,000 innocents, it's 13,000 terrorists that they killed. And they don't believe it after you give them the evidence. What do you do with that? What do you do with that if someone won't believe the facts and evidence? What is Israel to do when no one has any facts? The UN makes resolutions saying you're committing atrocities, you're committing genocide. The Hague is saying they're committing genocide. What is Israel to do? What would you do if this was you and everyone's lying about you taking you to court and everything's a lie? What would you do? Would you fight back? How, how do you fight back? What would Jesus do? You have to know this because it's not just going to happen to Israel as it is, as you're watching. It's going to happen to you, okay? It's going to happen to you. Even in this regard of supporting Israel, they're going to call you all. Well, you support genocide, Brandon. Don't you know that the Jews are starving people out? Number one, you better know your talking points. You better know how to counteract an idiot out there that's lying. I'm not talking about people that don't have the facts and evidence. I'm talking about people that have facts and evidence and they know they're lying. You have to confront that. You have to dispel that. What did he do with the Pharisees? He went right after the jugular with them. Okay? He gives grace to the humble. If someone says, well, am I supposed to be pro-Israel, pro-Palestine? Well, that's humble. I'll explain to you what the situation is. And you explain that. You have to be prepared to give an answer for the reason. right? But if you're dealing with a hostile individual, what did he do with the Pharisees? He resisted them. And how do you resist them? He resisted with the truth. He kept going right after them. He didn't stay silent. He went right after them. Grace to the humble, I'll teach you. But if you're resisting me, I'm going after you. And if I've told you many times, and I know I'm not going to get the right reaction to, from you, and I've already told you, I'm going to then remain silent with you because I'm not going to try to educate you anymore. 
If I've given you the facts and evidence and you still don't understand and you still are hating the Jews, then it's a spiritual problem with you. And at that point, I'm going to shake the dust off my feet and, and, and I'm done with you because I, no facts and evidence can convince you. So you got to know who you're dealing with. you got to know, if, am I dealing with a fool who is just ignorant, okay? Am I dealing with a fool that no matter what I give the person, it doesn't matter? Or am I dealing with an evil person, okay? Or am I dealing with a teachable person? Okay, you have to discern which four are you dealing with. So what you'll, you'll see in Scripture is Messiah, depending on who he's dealing with, will function differently. To the teachable, teaches them. To the ignorant, that's foolish, but just needs more facts and evidence, gave them information. The fool, like Herod, didn't even answer him. Evil people went after them, went after the jugular, Resisted him with the truth, the Pharisees, you shall not see me again until you learn to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So he shut him down. We're done. I've given you the answer. You're resisting me. I'm done. So you've got to know what you're dealing with. But at the end of the day, you have to fight lies with truth. You're never going to get past that. You have to fight it with truth. That means you have to defend it. That just means you have to sacrifice for it. You have to do whatever you can to get the truth out. Because otherwise, if you don't, if you don't correct it and attempt to correct it, they will continue the lie. This is what happened to the German people. And again, we're looking at lie, lies, right? And you're like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I know. But if you don't fight for the truth, we will end up like Germany again. Because you already saw the, the cartoons. The cartoons are already being produced. And no one's getting reprimanded on this. So I like, I like what Carolyn Glick uh, said in her article, and I'll end on this because we've got to get out of here. I said, she goes, if the Jews deserve to be killed because Jews are evil, then the Jewish state deserves to be annihilated because it is the evil Jewish state. So he's take, she's taking their logic out, right? Everything that happens to Israel is proof of its evil. That's, she, again, she's taking the logic out. Every crime committed against Israel is a crime Israel committed, if we use your logic. The depressing thing, of course, is that Hamas' strategy is working. The latent Jew hatred in the West was widespread enough to support their crimes. She's totally right. It is working. And why is it working? Why do blood libels work? Because people don't like the truth. Now, uh, uh, let me end on this. And, and, and one of Prager's videos said this. I'm going to give credit to the Prager video, but it made a good point. Interesting thing about Israel. You notice how it divided everyone? And it really, I mean, it just split, split people right down the middle, right? People I thought that were on our side, like Tucker, not on our side. Not on our side. Uh, Candace Owens, not on our side. Sorry, she's not. So it's even going into the Republican Party and the conservative elements, and many of them are becoming anti-Israel. And they say they're not anti-Semitic, but like Prager said, you can't be anti-Israel and say you're not anti-Semitic. It's the same thing. So... We're starting to see this in the conservative elements, in the right-wing elements, that, that's starting to happen. Okay. Interesting thing that they, they mentioned, and I think it's, it's worth saying, Israel, your position on Israel, which stems from the Bible, is like a north star for your moral compass. What do you mean? Look, I can tell you this. If you don't understand Israel correctly and don't get Israel, the prophetic significance of Israel, what God's doing with the, the Abrahamic covenant and, and, and all of that, if you don't get it, I pretty much can guess that your, the rest of your mindset is going to be goofed up to some extent. But I can tell that when people get Israel correct and they understand it, and again, it's not a blank check to the Israeli government to do anything they want. And we're not saying that. But you get Israel correct, pretty much the rest of things in life start making sense to you. And I think there's something there. I think there's something there spiritually. Um, and I, and I, so I, 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 I was thinking about this today, and I thought, 
There's something about Israel that creates a North Star. And, it, and, and, and it, I think it has to do with understanding God's promises, understanding God's program, um, and what he's planning to do through the nation of Israel. And so really it's a God thing. So th- I think that's why Israel is a North Star because, yeah, she's in unbelief and everything. I get that. Um, I'm, but she represents the promises of God to humanity. And, and, and I, think that, I think if I could say this right, when you hate Israel, it has to do with your view of God. I think, I think the two are intertwined. And just the same thing as if you hate the church, you hate Christ, because that's his bride. And Israel is the wife of Yahweh. And so I, I, when, when they said that on the prayer video, I took it a little bit deeper, and I said, yeah, because it reflects God. That's why Israel's a north star, because it reflects the person's intention about God. And look, think about this. Paul was making the point to the Roman Christians about Israel, and he was saying, look, if you trust that, that God is going to make good on his promises to you personally, well, the basis of him making his promises to you personally is how he makes his promises to Israel. So everything is predicated on, will, do you believe he will fulfill his promises to Israel? And the obvious answer would be yes. Well, then, then that's why you can trust him for your personal promises that he promises to resurrect you, to do- adopt you, to put you in his family, and all the other things that Paul lays out in Romans. And so, yeah, I totally get the North Star of being Israel being the way you can tell where someone's at in their personal life. It totally makes sense. How, look, 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 think about this. We got idiots out there that claim to be Christian that absolutely hate Israel. I, 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 what are you talking about, man? Because the covenants are going through her. The new covenant came out of her. Your Messiah is Jewish. How did you miss that? And I think it starts, it starts revealing what's really going on inside the person spiritually. And I think why this has become such a dividing issue is because of that. So anyway, that's my theory. And I want you to chew on that a little bit. But I, I'm starting to recognize that Israel is becoming a North Star. And other things are no stars, no doubt about that. But I think it's one of them, right? It's one of them. So anyway, we got to do what we can. You're seeing it happen. It's 1938. Do not be like the German Christians who said, you know what? I'm just going to go along with this Hitler guy. Seems like he's got the right idea. Uh, Jews are causing all the problems. If we didn't have the Jewish state, we wouldn't have all these problems. Be careful. That's Hitler. We have to resist like the confessing church did. Say, not on our watch. Not going to happen here. All right? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for what we can learn, uh, even shockingly, what's going on in our societies. I, I, I'm shocked, Lord. And here we are again, uh, watching the same things develop, Lord. But you've put us here for such a time as this. We're here to do a job. We know the truth, and we need to expose the lies and the errors, and we need to get this truth out, Father. So help us do that as best we can with gentleness and with respect, but at times we're going to have to be forceful sometimes to get the truth out if we're dealing with Pharisees. Give us that discernment of who we're dealing with so we know how to give them the right information, Father. Bless us now as we go. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.